and that's not the first time steam has scared me on the bathroom. Josh's bathroom is so flipping cold that when you do your whiz, <laughs> like, there's so much steam, right? But I don't really feel the cold that much, so I don't know, I mean, that's just, that's just a bathroom repeat. And this steam rises up, I thought something was on fire, I was like, oh no! But, so yeah, that twice in my life, I had to do my business, and steam has scared the living out of me. Exciting stuff. <laughs> Is that the intro for the next one? <laughs> yes. So I was doing a week. So I was doing a week. <laughs> that has to be in. Basically, the term is Christian apologetics is a branch of Christian theology that defends Christianity against objections. So you can't really argue against that, can you? It's just a call. Yeah, say that again. Oh, yeah, what the, what the fuck? Um, Christian apologetics is a branch of Christian theology that defends Christianity against objections. Yeah, but you say it's the way forward. Yeah, because if you think about it, right? All society is is arguments at the minute. Right, for, as a reference, I'm uh, pressing on Ben's idea that the way forward is apologetics. In terms of... Um, Today, Junior! Yes, because like society today is all. The testimony, Ben! My testimony. No. Society, well, yeah, I did become a Christian actually through Christian apologetics. But. Society today is all arguments and objections and criticisms and you know it's just everything is everything. I don't know. And yeah, like, that's what it is now, and that's what it was the past twenty years. It's not the future. I hope it's not the future. Well, as in the, as in the way forward in terms of um, proclaiming proclaiming the gospel, because like. You know, with Billy Graham and all, like, we have these huge, big rallies, and there's so many people there. Whereas, sort of now, we're forced to have these one-to-ones all the time, I think, especially with young Christians. Like, Josh, me and you in school were debating non-stop. Not necessarily about God all the time, but, like, it's the same sort of stuff. <laughs> Pretty useless stuff, more like, but, um, but like, you know, that's, that's just, it's just how it is. Um... If you have somebody who says, I mean, what what is it? Um, living waters. A great comfort. Okay. This man, I but love that guy. guy. He's great. Have, he says we dogs so cute. Mate, have you seen the banana man? Have you, Do you seen, know what that is? Yes. The banana man. The banana man. It's not the beano. Oh, <laughs> what a throwback! <laughs> um, but just no. <laughs> anyway, just on that, just on them, um, your man. Every time Eric eats a banana. Isn't that it? Yeah, Banana Man. Every time Eric eats a banana. Every like, time who? Eric. Isn't that his name? Eric. Banana, banana oh, Man. Maybe. But you... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah, so if you, have you seen... I thought you were talking about Ray Comfort. I was like... <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> his name's not Eric. His name's Ray. <laughs> uh, he's such a, such a cool guy. And he, the, have you seen The Atheist Delusion? It's a yes. movie. It's a, yeah, it's so good. I've seen it like twice. It's a movie. Is this one of Red Comfort's compilations? Yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie on. But it's like his compilation of yeah, asking yeah, people, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's basically it's a movie, and I, I sent this to a few, a few atheist friends of mine as well. Um, and uh, it's really good. It's an hour long, and that's all, that's all sort of apologetics right there. This this having a debate, you know, this having. Right, a I mean, like Red Comfort, he's it, the, well, yeah, the man, part of him that believe. makes him successful is not the apologetics part of it right he puts his strategy is right put the fear of god in you right the fear of god is beginning of, beginning of wisdom takes him through the ten commandments right mm. bam 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 he takes him to the sermon of the mount right if he ever looked in a woman with lust has committed on in her heart but right that, and then they're like whoa yeah right? that's that's an apologetic that's an, that's that's making an apology. That, that's not um, that's this this bam 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 as you said. No 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 no. He's not he's not inflicting a rational argument on them. He's inflicting an emotional argument on them. Okay, it's not a. No one's like no. No one's like oh well, two and two is four. Yeah. And you know do all this math. And but, like, oh right, Christianity. Well yeah, but that's what he. But, is. That's what I would I would argue that is what sort of he does with his. 
especially it comes to mind when he talks about um, Jesus, you know, taking your place. Or are, are you sinned? Have you ever have you ever stolen? Have you ever downloaded movies on, on illegally or stuff like? Like, it gives examples, and they go, "Oh yeah," like yes. he's very good at that. Yeah, but like all those people, like they do make an objection. You know, you know, no, I'm not a Christian, so I know I'm an atheist or an agnostic, or and they yeah, all have, like, like, have the reasons for that. The the, the important part about that is. Right. One, it's like it's not a rational argument; it's an emotional argument, right? And two, um, the thing that like uh, the people he's talking to are most impacted by, uh, it's not it's not the argument; it's the fa- like part, like a lot of you would see a bunch of his videos. It's like the, these guys, these people he's come up to, are really touched. This random yeah. guy showed an act of love and kindness. He went up to that the, maybe they're like feeling down they're like really lost in their life right and they're just like hoping that just to meet someone and then right out of the blue mm-hmm. right comfort and they, they talk about that and there's like I was like this is strange I was so I, I was is, I was like wanting to find someone and then here you are the second name is comfort like you know and <laughs> I comfort I comfort you middle name banana yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I guess in terms of on a more personal note, I, but, wait a minute, wait, like, oh, let me okay. just let hold that thought, right? The fact that he came up to them in pure love and kindness, right? Wanting to help them, be their friend, right? And seriously caring about them, that's not apologetics. Yeah, well, I think, well, apolog- apologetics does not, it's not a section, that, like, the apologetics follows the whole Bible just like Ray's been doing, you know? Like, apologetics is not, bits and bobs of it's just a different ideology uh, apologetics is what um proclaiming jesus to be nowadays um or proclaiming the word of god like uh for example um i became a christian through apologetics through a guy called jeff durbin who, who started a video who started a, a church called apology do you know who jeff durbin he's awesome he's guy. got quite a beard he is the most beautiful beard i've ever seen and he's a martial artist. You have a nice beard too, Josh, by the way. Thank you. I like I'm sorry, beard. Josh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, and it, it, all he was saying was out like, of mm. love and grace and kindness and various, and lots of it was very similar. The only, the only difference is um, Ray, Ray does not um, pick apart a person's argument and analyze it. Ray, as you said, goes up to them and comforts them <laughs> like he goes up to them and explains everything he, to he, them. Proposes, he, does, he, he doesn't come up and go this is all the things you're wrong with he yes. goes this is all the things that, that I know this is my proposal to you is that if there is a God and you've done all these things you've broken all his laws mm. then you're going to have to face the wrath and mm. do you want mm. to face that wrath sort of thing um, and then they go whereas, no and then yeah. Jesus yeah. whereas I think apologetics is not to say that apologetics can't be that but to me my understanding of apologetics is that it's a lot more scientific it's Mm. a lot more going through as you've said the rationalizing it and making it sort of this is why christianity Mm. because it's x y and z i think is it uh john lennox isn't it yes he does a lot of that i think Mm. and so i think there's yeah but even john lennox right you can Mm -hmm. he's got like he's a very smart guy right yeah but um <laughs> professor of <laughs> mathematics in oxford yes <laughs> obviously he's a smart <laughs> guy he's right? relatively smart <laughs> just like just one pinch. would say he's above average in intelligence yeah, one, would, one would say one could describe him as that but um he has he talks about stories like my favorite stories of him aren't his rational rational stories <laughs> is my favorite stories of when he's on this he gets called to go to Russia of all places Russia why are you going to Russia he's like right I'm going to Russia okay okay John bye yeah literally <laughs> Mad. and he's on this train or he, well uh, I don't know I thought I think that's in the end he, he, um, he talks to these Russian uh, I knew this story I think mathematics people mm-hmm. mathematicians right and they're like amazed because they're obviously Russia right modern day Russia with the Soviet Union, they're like brought up in atheism, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, they're like gossiping, like, well, how? I might be getting this wrong, but like, it's something like this. They're like gossiping, like, how can this man? I thought, I thought, uh, I thought, 
religion and God was like purely just not it was just like some uh, would call it the working man's they thought theory. it was just it was just like stupid kind of was like yeah. why is why would they even trouble mm-hmm. and then make this like brilliant man mm-hmm. who's like has a, an amazing faith and they're like oh right and then he goes and he's on a train and there's like some Russian people on the train and they start talking and they, he talks starts talking about Christianity or something and um, he has this had this book or something right which he got some like specific way he got this Russian Bible right mm-hmm. and he gave it to that person and the person was like amazed because they were like they never like had an actual Bible before mm-hmm. no less in their own language and it was such a specific series of events that led him to that train yeah and he doesn't he doesn't like he doesn't like have a way to explain that he's yeah. just he just talks about that he was invited to Russia because of his renown and his yeah you yeah, know like so he was invited through his conversations with various people that then brought him his fame but in terms of uh, you said uh, in terms but, of su- like the Bible. in terms of success like I think Christians as Christians we defi- what's successful to us is not internet like um, it's like a celebratory effects um, and things like that what's success to us is at least one person came to faith who we got to witness to that's a success in Christian um, points of view not like you're ticking all the boxes in an atheist's argument where, oh wait, he said this, so I'm going to automatically go to mm-hmm. um, sort of this. So he's like, oh, he talked about the beginning of the universe. Okay, well then let's talk about the uh, Genesis story. Okay, so he's talked about uh, evolution. Uh, let's go back. And it's sort of this back and forth cycle. He talked about historical fact checkers. <laughs> and he goes and talks about how the, the Bible was translated and stuff and talks about the resurrection of Christ, talks about how Christ came to 500 people. I'm just talking about this is how apologetics works. When an atheist brings up a point, we then counter that point with a point of our own. And once they're done, it's sort of this ticks until basically you both run out of juice and one of you says, so do you see what I mean? And the other one goes, yes, I no. do. <laughs> but... This is the biggest thing, though. This is why I apologize. I don't think this is one area in apologetics doesn't seem to be a comfortable. Apologetics is so... Modern apologetics, I should say modern apologetics, is so logical that the problem with unbelievers is not a problem of facts or science or logic. Because I, I, you could go through... You can go through that. I mean, what does Ray Comfort do, do at the beginning? He brings a book and he goes, do you want to look through that book? And then they go, yeah. And he goes, I want you to see the pictures. I want you to see the writing. No, what if I told you that that book was created by itself? What if I told you that book was always there? Why, why would you not believe me? And they would go, oh, because I can see the, the author's name, I can see the colors, I can see the, obviously this had been created. And then he goes, well, look at DNA, look at the stars, look at the tree over there. Is that not more detailed, more intricate than this puny book? Why is that then suddenly appear to itself? That's an apologetic. Yes. Yeah, so he starts off that way. So they captivate- No, I'd say, I, don't, I don't think that's the future. Well, the, the reason that I talk about, I don't think that's the highest thing we should be aiming for. It's in, no, but like in this. it's not. It's not the future. I don't, I don't, I'm saying like, well, it's not the highest thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yes. When, when in a podcast. <laughs> And all the person he is, is, do you know what I'm talking about? But yeah, but like, you obviously disagree with me. So, but like, like, what do you think? Do you know what I'm talking about? Right? Like, apologetics what do I think? should not be the future. Yeah, I don't want... I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Like, I think apologetics is important. we got to yes. lay out the grounds for it. Is it the future? I'm not negating apologetics. Yeah. I'm saying I, it should be I a lower tier to you. what we're putting it right now. Um, I guess. Like, I think... Apologetics is a big part of it, but I don't think that is the ultimate, like, thing, I think. So you preach the gospel is, like, the command, and then we have how we do that. We can do that through apologetics. Uh, We can do that through Sunday morning sermon. We can do that through five-day club with kids, prayer. There's endless ways you can do that. Is apologetics the future? 
I think it might be a big part of it. Is it the be all and end all? I can't say. Like, who's to say we're even going to be here tomorrow? Like, the Lord could come back, and I hope um, so. There's, there's, <laughs> there's no need for projects once he comes back. But um, yeah, I think it is an important part. Break up so How do you know we can see? God well, there. I think, well, I, mean, I, think definitions, I think definitions are a thing here, right? Okay, in every conversation you have, and if they disagree, the moment you respond to that disagreement isn't apologetic. That's just that's just basis, all right? Yes. But in today, I do right, not think it should be the most potent thing we should be like, aiming for. The, uh, uh, apologetics is not trying to win people over; it's trying to win hearts over. It's about not trying to convert somebody's entire change of mind by first destroying them intellectually. That's not the way of apologetics. It's something Christians fall into and actually uh, and get enjoyment in destroying people. That's not Christian attitude. That's not Christian thinking. It's about actually just planting a seed. You know, it's like oh wait, actually I didn't think of that before. That's what, that's what Ray Comfort does. He's like, well, this book didn't create itself. Why should that tree? And then, mm-hmm. and then they're like, oh, well, I didn't think of that. I've got to think of that. That's, that's all it takes. Right. But you know, if Ray but Comfort... When, when, what, I mean, what I mean about A's apologetics of future, all right? I said that in the context of what the future is going to look like. What will the future look like, Ben? Everything is just going to like be... Prophet except, Thompson. Literally, every, like the future is like, do whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. So if you say, believe in Jesus or you'll go to hell, that's going to be a big no-no to say in society. You can't tell, that's going to hurt them. Ah, freedom of speech is gone. You know, like, I think apologetics is something we need because we, we, need, we are in a time that is so emotional. I'm We're saying we so, need apologetics, I agree with you. Yes, uh, but I think like what you said about the future, like it's not that the be on end all is to utterly smash people intellectually the be all and end all is to witness and to bear testimony as Christians this is our duty Mm -hmm. to proclaim the word of the Lord you can do that any way you want as long as your heart is true and you're a Christian you can do that I just find that apologetics is to me a really good starting point because it kits you out with a lot of things. A book I would um, a book I would recommend is is called Tactics by Gregory Kukul it is all about um, how to engage in conversation with non-believers, and it's like it's like a series of steps that you can you can say. And then also, I like to quote Frank Turek, who said, who like begins every conversation with a non-believer. If Christianity was true, would you be a Christian? Now they either say yes or no. If they say yes, then you can go ahead and make an apologetic. You can go ahead and give them all the facts and the science and say, well, look, this is this, that, is that. Then you can have a really logical intellectual debate because they're up for a logical intellectual debate because they said, yes, I would believe in Christianity if it was true. So then there's, that's where apologetics come in. But if their answer was no, no, I wouldn't be a Christian, even if Christianity was true. That's not, you could tell them all the facts and all the science in the world. And they still, well, obviously, they're, because their answer is no. Um, so automatically, then that's a heart problem. That's a problem. That's a, that's something that you need to stick at. That's not going to be a single day conversation in no way, shape, or form. Um, and nine times out of ten, it's because um, something happened to them, like their say their granny passed away, and then that's just when they started to not believe in God anymore, or the fact that their parents brought them up believing in God the same way one would believe in Santa Claus. I think that's a very big part with um, Christianity nowadays. Oh. Like, or sorry, believing in God nowadays, people just grew out of it. And um, once it's a problem of the heart, when they say no, that's when apologetics is not like not used, but it's, it's saved. You know, it's like okay, obviously this person's not going to have an intellectual conversation. It's going to be an emotional conversation. Yes, and what do you think the majority of people have a intellectual problem or a heart problem? Heart problem. Right. This is what I'm talking about. How do you soften someone's heart? Hmm? How does one soften? You don't. Yes. God does. Mm-hmm. And, but like what, right, if Ray Comfort was a massive asshole, right, <laughs> people wouldn't listen to him. Yeah. Crucial word, if, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. If, if, yeah, second if name's Comfort. If cross, like really stubborn and arrogant, mm. then they yes. wouldn't, yeah. Right. Why is that? Because people... First Corinthians 13. Isn't it First Corinthians 13? <laughs> second Corinthians it's 13. maybe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Can I clarify that? Oh, it, yeah, first Corinthians thirteen. If Red Comfort was a massive asshole, he would not uh, have the effect he does. That's what it says. Exactly. Exactly. So do you say, do you think because I like apologetics, I'm a massive asshole? No. 
<laughs> I do think you're a massive asshole uh, oh. for different no. reasons. <laughs> but I think that's um, First Corinthians 13 is correct, I got it. Um, we... It's the way of love, and it's like, so Paul's like, if I speak in the tongues of men and the angels, uh, yes. but yeah. I have not love, I'm nothing but a noisy symbol. Pretty much. So no matter how intellectual you can be, if you come across arrogant in any way, if you come across if you don't not show lovingly, love. yeah, then no one's going to listen to you because mm-hmm. they're yes. not going to... That is a yes. key passage. In, yeah. Like, honestly, that, I, 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 I was reading that one a few days ago, actually. Um, I like, think we've got that up on our Instagram. Yeah, it, it's so, like, key, this, mm-hmm. this idea of love. Um, but like you see you know what James talks about like oh congratulations even the demons you know, oh, yeah, yeah. you know there is a set standard that we need to fulfill as Christians there is a set amount of intellectual ability that we need to have yeah right if there's a big pyramid hierarchy of importance right I'm saying love would be at the top of that mm-hmm. yep and logic based arguments would be like three or four or something don't ask me about two I was just going to say what's two I well know. yeah I like I do like that picture of this sort of pyramid of um, um, what witnessing this sort of um, idea of what witnessing is I think I, I, I mean I learn better via example not via sheets of paper telling me what to do and what not to do mm. um, and because of God we do have an example we have Jesus Jesus spoke in metaphors all the time I love my metaphors um, and you know when Jesus was not afraid to you know pin down whatever the pharisees were saying you know like the the, the really the one that sticks out is he who is without sin shall cast the first stone like that's like a boom hard hitting you know you're like ah and then they all just walk away one by one starting with the eldest like it just ooh, he's got us you know this this sort of idea like jesus did not set out to completely demolish them like that was a demolishing moment but that's not that was not jesus's intention you know, Jesus is not intentionally like, oh, yo, watch this, disciples, I'm about to wreck this man's whole career. You know, like, he didn't decide to do that. And I think there's that perfect example that we must have. Um, metaphors, I find, especially in my, um, in my trying to witness, metaphors just work so incredibly well. It's just because parables are an understanding of um, human life. Um, Again, or I keep going back to this dragons episode. That is a metaphor for um, humanity. This is, and then obviously God being, I guess, the author. So it's more than metaphor. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, it's a more than a. But all metaphors obviously have a different meaning. It's just how you use them. Like I, you think of a metaphor like a sword, right? Like whatever moment you need that sword you know like you will choose the correct sort of metaphor for it or whatever like say you're cutting carrots you're not going to use a sword you're going to use a little knife so you're going to use like a simple metaphor but if you're like in this really big intellectual argument i find that metaphors in mixed with apologetics and obviously love this love is the key ingredient um with that select sort of so i would say yeah so um what did i say love apologetics and um, metaphors I find you mix them all together I find that that can be a very helpful and beneficial argument and statement um, and whether as we go back to the heart um, issue if it's a problem with the heart or a problem with the mind you can only access somebody's heart if they open their mind to you you know your mind is, a, is, a, is, a, is the armour of the heart mm, I don't think so no why mm. Well, you know, let, me, let, me, let me explain further. I've, uh, nobody just... It's very rare that people walk around with their heart on their sleeve and open up to everything. Somebody needs to have... Individuals have a certain level of decorum and intelligibility to um, obviously protect their heart because you don't want to be an open book all the time. You know? That sets you up for hurt. It sets you up for, you know, grief. The people logically know when to say things and when not to say things concerning matters of, of the heart. You know, nobody's going to go up to you and say, I'm like, like some random person's going to just say, oh, I'm really having a tough time. I'm actually being really depressed and stuff. Like you're just standing in queue for your McDonald's. Like nobody's going to do that. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh, okay. Right. Fishing boat. I did say, right. Very dangerous, right. One of the most dangerous jobs. Back when. Fisherman, right. And... Of course, Australia thing, right? 
these, these fishermen go out, right? And uh, one, there's there's two, right? Two boats, right? They're not affiliated with each other. One's got like, a camera crew on it, right? Doing some TV show. And they look at this other boat. One man's on the outside of the boat, like hanging on to something, like trying to cut something loose. Big wave, he's gone, right? Vanished. In these waters, it's so cold, you can die within like two minutes, right? Mm. Hypothermia sets in, you die, right? Two fishermen, two fisher boats, far off, middle of nowhere, right? They don't know this man. They're like, this is the most dangerous job in the world. He's, he could, he most likely will die, right? Most likely, 90% chance he's gonna die. Mm-hmm. What well, these fishermen do, the camera crew, they, they immediately, without thinking, they stop fishing, they turn the boats, they go towards this boat in the direction where they think they've seen the guy last, mm-hmm. and they pull him out, and they strip all his clothes off and put blank- blankets on them, right, mm-hmm. so he wouldn't die, right, he's not, he's not completely out of it yet, right, he could mm-hmm. still die. What does Captain do? He's never met this man before in his life, he doesn't know his name, he hasn't he hasn't even talked to him he hasn't seen him for over a minute he comes down and he gives a big hug and they're all in tears mm. where was the intellectual argument there oh well, I'm glad you asked because the key thing about this is circumstance that's the key thing of course you've, 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 there's a chance of saving a life or witnessing a life pass on that's really that's really quite something, right? I'm not saying like oh, like you you, you know when, when that person's close to death, if somebody's on their deathbed, and you sit down and go, "Why are you an atheist?" Yeah, that's not going to be very helpful. <laughs> They've got like, you know, thirty seconds left. You're going to tell them as much as you can about the, the saving grace of God and how it, there's a, there's an eternity of happiness waiting for you if you just listen to me. You know, like so yeah I, I agree with you that apologetics and, and you know that apologetics has its place but of course of course of course it's not in every area mm-hmm. as you said there is circumstance if somebody was if you were if you were if you were to say out preaching you had, you had a megaphone like um um like was it um Brooklyn Baptist or something like that. I forget what it's called. Todd Freed does it now down at the Georgia State University. Yeah, like, you know, you've just got this megaphone and all these t- people are, like, talking to you and stuff, right? And then one student, right, asks you quietly, can I speak to you in private? And then, okay, you finish up, you can speak to them in private, you can go and get coffee, go at one-to-one, and they just, like, break down. Like, it's just, and he's gone, of course you're not going to go, well, because you're an atheist, let me tell you why atheism is wrong. It's like, of course you're not going to. Because love is the key ingredient. You, you approach that with love, and I think love was felt in that story that you've just said. And look, you've told a story, which is what, like what Jesus did. You know, there's, there's, there's a story in order to help us to understand different points of views. Um, very touching story in which, of course, apologetics, I think, will be the farthest um, you've, ever, you've, you've ever seen. But if that person passed away, right, and then there's, there's the boat home, okay, and um, what if one of the fishermen was say like or say like you were praying with the person and, and, and until they passed away and somebody was like I don't know why you were doing that there's nothing I'll be on there because of his grief obviously and because of the emotion you're just like why would God do that why would God take that person away which is very common then I believe then that's a perfect incidence of love apologetics and emotional reasoning so I think it's not so much uh, an argument of where to put apologetics because apologetics will go where apologetics fits and it takes an emotional uh, a set amount of emotional intelligence to understand when and where to use apologetics and I think that's, uh, it, was a, it was a really good story and a perfect example um, of that you know so just what the conclusion of what I'm saying is Going back to the whole yes and no, yes, if Christianity is true, be a Christian, no, if Christianity is true, be a Christian, it takes logical intelligence and emotional intelligence hand in hand, wrapped up in love, in order to witness in modern society today, I think. Because it's the exact same, honestly, it's the exact same back in, back in the uh, biblical ages. People had disagreements, people had arguments, and yet people still are becoming Christians everywhere. And I think we have to find 
confidence and be encouraged by that and just pray and ask God for wisdom and the ability to continue to speak in a way that he gave us gifts so we will use those gifts to glorify him you know so I guess, I guess that's what I'm saying I'm neither I, I, I think you have successfully um, changed my mind in the fact that oh a project is the future but you've also made me realise that apologetics is a piece in a in a bigger puzzle yes mm -hmm. yeah and I think that's a main source of it right so is it the future no is it part of the future yes yeah. obviously it's part of the future obviously but I want I want I want to I want to make you understand how big of the f part of the future should be that is love mm -hmm. anyway what is what is Jesus man is is uh, God's son, God incarnate. He died for our sins. Is your savior of the world? Right. So he's and my best friend. So he exists hey. in the, both the. Uh... <laughs> so your best friend too, my man. And yours, Josh. So he's he's the he's the thing that unites heaven and earth. Okay. Yes. He's the process. The he unites heaven and earth. And like when heaven and earth un unite, that that sums up what love is supposed to be. Okay. So when I say love, I'm talking about the thing that makes Jesus who Jesus is, the uniting of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? And when I even like think about apologetics, it's like in like a completely different completely different level. The, the love in apologetics? No, I'm just saying like comparing the importance of both, right? Okay. Yeah. It's like it's like it's just you know, you know, it's like what it's like I can't even get the words out. Well, I, I I find it I find it difficult to understand that with love only. That um, by the way, if you uh, we we came we give we we made this sort of ingredient with love, um, apologetics and uh, emotional intelligence a uh, set level of emotional intelligence, however uh, way you want to convey that. I think in using that, that's just, that's just sort of you know that's, that's a sentence a few sentences it's a paragraph in a dialogue um, but if you only have love like it's like the opposite of, of Corinthians if you go and tell people but you have no love then you're just a ganging yeah, banging symbol okay mm -hmm. but what if you only have love you don't understand what love is I, I do understand what love is Love should encompass encompass everything. Yes, that's the, including that's... the way you use po apologetics. Yeah. Okay. When I say love is the thing that like brings unites heaven and earth, mm -hmm. that's the entirety of heaven and the entirety of earth. So love. That's is... it's not like oh we just show love, right? Well, yeah. Love is love is like just like as. God, I, I can't even, again. I can't put it into words, right? So you like uh, show kindness to someone, right? Mm. You care about them, right? You provide for them, you give them an ear to listen uh, to yeah. them, right? You help them up, right? Expecting nothing in return, mm. right? Out of sheer charity, okay? Mm. You know, you want the best for them, expecting nothing in return, okay? Mm. Like it's not like love is the, in the if you're like the way you've like described love it's like this and it's just it's only in heaven right it's all in your head right you just I just love people you know well no but like it's got this earth aspect it's the united of heaven and earth right yeah. love has action to it okay but yeah I mean what is what's what's the Bible say is the greatest act of love is for one friend to die for, is for somebody to die for their friends Jesus himself died for us his friends he loves us. Uh, in our episode about the four loves of C.S. Lewis, agape is literally charity. This idea of loving others at no um, and, and no reasoning to gain any love back. We love unconditionally to the our spouses, our our um, our children. God loves us unconditionally as Christians, but yet um, there's obviously, as we talked about in our previous episode, um, you know, the justice of God. Like I'm not in no way shape or form I said, oh love everyone. I think that's 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 shallow love. That's not at all 
um, that's, 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 that's merely the surface of a deeper ocean um, and but you see the thing is though when you look at the ocean all you see is the surface you don't see anything else beneath the waves you don't see the fish the whales you don't see the life that love can bring and as Christians we have to show that sort of surface to draw in a curiosity to then once we have piqued people's curiosity who's Jesus oh I mean I want to know Jesus is what's that whole Jesus story about actually I have a I already have some views about God, um, but you say different things. Please let me tell you that. Dive right into the ocean, big man. <laughs> like we as Christians, yes, demonstrate and embody. Must demonstrate and embody love. But must also be prepared for the yes. situations. Yes, but the the apologetics only comes up every now and again. All right. Okay. The love should never cease. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Amen to that, brother. Like. 100% love I mean, love is unending God being love First uh, John 1 like the word was God and God was love and like you know it's, you can't fathom it and that's why I describe it as an ocean you know um, like love like when is, I, is endless God created the world to love we love because he first loved us love is key in everything that we do as Christians it is our duty was it God's uh, one of Paul love love uh, uh, there's a saying I think but I, I, I forgot it but yeah love in everything that we do and I'm agreeing you with I, I agree with you in that and just to, to bring it back to apologetics well, that that verse um, is the verse you're on about Corinthians 13 it, oh well about being a ganging a clanging clanging, <laughs> clanging symbol a yeah, ganging claw. That's what. That's what. That's what somebody. I think that's what. I think, and I. I. I think I first time experience because before I was a Christian, I would. I was so interested in apologetics that I was actually like, on a non-stop roll trying to convince some of my school friends. But I wasn't even a Christian myself. I just loved the idea of destroying somebody mentally, which is evil and not Christian at all. I had no love. Okay, and I was a perfect example of a clanging symbol okay but now that we have love and have an understanding of love and having studied it for our, from our love episode like it unites and divides also like as an ocean should it has its rises it has its storms the, the, the storms of love of flip arguments between spices fallouts between fathers and sons um god being tested you know people not believing in him people ignoring people brushing him away keeping him i don't want any of that i like to live my life i like to be my own god that is the storms of love and that's where christians must sail right in the heart of it because that's what jesus did jesus came right down to earth he came from heaven to earth down it wasn't an upgrade it was a downgrade and because he did that then what does he do next well he dies for us as well that's unconditional that, that's that is beautiful grace and love and so we must mirror that but you don't sail into a storm without being well equipped you know you don't sail into a storm without knowing how like obviously the ship works without knowing the names of the crew hands so you can shout on them and call on them so that they can get onto the sails they can control the the the, the, the boat they can make sure that they survive that storm and through that preparation all right is a place one of those one of those people on that ship is apologetics another one is emotional intelligence and love i think is the whole reason why we built the ship in the first place because it's an ocean and i think that's as a christian's duty to sail across that and the reason i say this is because you know in recent history we just had this big thread of militant atheism that sort of like died out a wee bit now right mm. you know the Richard Dawkins yeah. style and uh, Chris Richardson style of like militant atheism and then that was met with militant style like Christianity mm. where we're just missing the point of, of like the purpose of Christianity and I just I don't like it, right? I don't like it. It's it's not it's not right. It was a div- it was more of a divide than. And yeah, yeah. And the thing about it, especially in America right now, right, with conservatives and uh, 
Democrats. Democrats. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a disgrace. Mm-hmm. It's appalling. Yeah. It's the opposite of love. Mm-hmm. Okay? I don't, I don't care who, what side of the aisle are on. It's not loving. The love is supposed to be the thing that unites two worlds, but keeps, but without um, ignoring their individuality. Mm. Right? Tolerance. Why, why is God three persons and yet three separate persons? Because mm. he represents this aspect of love that mm. brings together that but does not destroy mm. in the bringing them together okay why is heaven and earth uniting through jesus it's that's what love supposed that's what love is the uniting of worlds without destruction mm. of both of them to create something new they're the mm. same they're, you know they're not it's not like heavens well, having the mold that's think, weird shape into the you know. I think it's worth to say that there's no love is not sort of acceptance and what it is known sort of today as I said that you know the sort of love everyone is only the surface like this idea that oh you can oh you can do whatever just don't offend anyone oh, I respect your opinion the whole time I think that's also like a big sort of enemy of Christians at the minute oh you're a Christian well I respect that that's so awesome that you believe that. Like that's actually such a hard barrier to get across. You could you could literally read the entire Bible to someone and they go, "Oh, that's lovely. You believe that? That's really cool." I don't personally do that. That is like a brick wall to Christians. Like we're like, how do I penetrate that? Love is not an acceptance. Love is tolerance. You know, and um, as you said, I hundred percent agree. That is a uniting factor. Hundred percent. Like. Another reason why it's a C is because it unites confidence. You can get from the here to England without crossing an ocean. It's it, it, it's a connection thing, all right. But it's when people deny it. It's when people don't believe people deserve to have that um, that connection, that ocean, that love, and that's where I think the true problem relies on. I mean, uh, division is come. Across, it happens when. Obviously, one party says to another party, I don't think you deserve to have this same respect as the people who believe what I think. Christians should not have that um, mentality. And I think you see that a lot with the rivalries between Catholicism and, um, and Protestants. This, this, like, they we're, we're meant to all, you know, mirror Christ. We're meant to mirror love. And yet, I mean, like, the troubles in Northern Ireland, like, Appalling, like division after division after division. Yeah, and there, there still is that, and there still is. Yeah, Kelsey was described. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, opinions. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was insane. That was insane. But I, like, I thought it was like obviously it's, it's not as bad as it was. But no. I thought it was like st- but it, the, but it's still not there. As bad as it was it's more still than there. It and a division is always going to be there. But that division. Division is not a place where you need to oh take your love go somewhere else like division is the holes that you need to fill with love, but not the love of the world where it says you know acceptance, the love of the Christian love the real love God God is love that kind of love the sacrificial saving grace of love that that kind of love that's what I'm interested in that's what I want to tell people that's what I want to show them it's emotional of course it's emotional it's the most emotional thing, and yet. The only way to bring that across is with the tools that God has laid out to you and the gifts that he's given to you, you know, gift of speaking, maybe the gift of listening is also very important in terms of love. You know, like listening is key, honestly, but just love, man, love. Love and beauty love is my answer. Beauty. Nah, oh, and no. what do you say as in the conclusion? <laughs> including what he said the, the episode <laughs> well like and I don't mean like the, I don't mean that <laughs> um, I mean uh, I, I do mean that but not yet yeah 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 um, <laughs> in Benedict <laughs> yeah I think I think Ben's got it there that love is pretty important uh, I think it's safe to say that I'm confused. <laughs> no. um, not that I get confused, but I just I've never been really good at doing stuff just straight off the bat. Like 
have to go write it up first. Um, but yeah, no, I think Ben made good points there. And Josh. Agree. And that is like uh, the example of the viewer. Everyone's like, yeah, I agree with Nat here. I'm confused. We should just have Nat all the time. I don't, the know, time what the t- I don't like know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, as a live as a, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, prefer, I, prefer the, I prefer the listening. I think a live sometimes. audience. Listening is key. We've got a live audience, guys. Yeah. You just like. In the studio, all the time. Just one guy. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to join yeah. in. Right, um, is that Boo! Boo, Ben, get off the stage. No. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that about wraps up yeah. that episode. Are we going to call this an inquiry to love number two or what? Awesome. Uh, no, it was about apologetics. It was, it was about, about apologetics. It was previously. That disappeared when it started. <laughs> <laughs> we went, where's apologetics? And we're like, Nowhere! We need love. Where's Paul <laughs> Jackson in the future? Well, the love. missing ingredient. Yeah. Right, love that. Right, yeah. So, as always, folks, um, if you want to give a wee like, no, not if you want to, you will like and you will subscribe and you will download. That's an order. Yeah, that's. Forget free will. You're getting commanded to do this. No, if Cash and yeah. Bell as well. We love like, you. Is that serious? <laughs> yeah, love. <Yep>. Love. Comment. <laughs> Comment. It's the it's the correct thing to do. Comment. Yes, oh, actually, yeah. it would be loving <laughs> to leave a comment. So as that well. we can destroy you with apologetics. Yes, and no. in a loving manner. In a loving manner. Yes, Corinthians. Right. Right. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Goodbye.